Hello and welcome to today's lecture where we will be reviewing the KPI Strategy Implementation 12-Step Plan. In the previous lecture we detailed the basic life cycle of a KPI, whereas in this lecture we will review the steps for developing, establishing, and deploying a KPI strategy. I'm Karina Epperly and I'll be your instructor for this course. The following 12 basic steps are essential in KPI strategy implementation. When these 12 steps are followed correctly, these steps will lead to the company's survival and increased profitability. To be and remain successful, a company must understand what the barriers are to their success, develop a plan of attack, implement that plan, and continuously move the company towards increased efficiency and productivity. This plan serves as the foundation. These 12 steps are 1. Understand the critical business needs of the company as established by the company stakeholders. 2. Based on the critical business needs, corporate identifies the business goals and objectives that will be the primary focus for the given year. 3. At the individual site level, 3 to 4 key performance indicators are established for the entire site to focus on for the given year. 4. A loss analysis is performed in order to identify and quantify the largest losses on the site. 5. Based on the critical business needs, business goals, and loss analysis, a master plan is created. The master plan details the strategy of how the company plans to satisfy the critical business needs, as well as the projects and or activity, the time frame, the person responsible, and the corresponding goal. 6. Each business unit, area, and or department develop KPIs based on the loss analysis that support the main site KPIs. 7. For each of the KPIs, historical data is analyzed for trends, special and common cause. 8. Based on the KPI's historical performance and the business goal, target and goal lines may be staggered. 9. Update master plan with the goals and time frames established for the KPIs. 10. For each KPI, establish an action plan. 11. Measure KPI based on the desired frequency, such as hourly, shiftly, daily, monthly, etc and 12. Hold periodic reviews of KPIs, follow action plan to assign the proper response and action items when needed. Complete items in a timely manner and communicate the progress. Step 1. Stakeholders identify critical business needs. Critical business needs are the goals and objectives a company must satisfy in order to remain competitive and profitable. Critical business needs are identified by the stakeholders are broad strategic goals and objectives that typically involve the entire organization. They are goals set at the strategic level that have a direct impact at the operational level. Critical business needs are derived by sifting through all of the barriers blocking the organization's success until the largest losses are identified. These largest losses become the critical business needs. Such barriers to success include but are not limited to poor customer retention, poor customer acquisition, high maintenance cost and old equipment, high accident rate, and high transportation cost. Step 2. Identify the business goals from the critical business needs. The critical business needs, the organizational master plan, and the site-specific business goals link together and act as the backbone to the company's continued growth and survival. Each element has its own important role. The critical business needs are the goals and objectives the company must satisfy in order to remain competitive and profitable as identified by the stakeholders. The organizational master plan serves as the connection between the critical business need to the site-specific business goals. The organizational master plan is the organization's strategy. How are we going to achieve our expected goals and objectives, and when can we expect the results? The corporate KPIs are born from this strategy. Site-specific business goals are the goals and objectives the site must deliver in order to be in alignment with the organization's critical business needs, organizational master plan, and the corporate KPIs. For example, KMB's ice cream factory owns 14 sites. KMB's stakeholders identified 45% reduction in maintenance costs as a main critical business need. The organization built the organizational master plan around the critical business need and came up with corporate KPIs to measure the progress. The corporate KPIs were sent to each of the 14 sites. Each site will then develop the site master plan and site-specific KPIs that will deliver the organization's expected results. Step 3. 
Identify plant KPIs from the business goal. Issue. High maintenance costs due to old equipment. Critical business need. 45% reduction in maintenance costs by Q4 2017. Organizational master plan declares to implement TPM phase 2 at both powder plants by Q3 2017. The site business goal for both plant A and plant B is to implement TPM phase 2 at both powder plants by Q3 2017. The goal was then broken down further based on current loss analysis and site leadership team into the main plant KPI, which is complete TPM phase 2 on pilot line by Q3 2017. Step 4. Perform loss analysis. A loss analysis is based on the lean manufacturing mindset of eliminating the eight types of waste from the entire process in order to obtain zero losses. All plant losses are quantified and dollarized in order to identify the main losses, the key opportunities. The loss analysis is a snapshot in time. It does not signify whether or not there are outliers in the data that may influence the total count. Part of the loss analysis should include thorough investigation into root causes for each main loss. Typically, the analogy of an iceberg is used to describe the eight types of waste in lean manufacturing, where the iceberg represents all of the waste in a plant and or organization. As we know from experience, icebergs are dangerous because what is hidden beneath the water is typically much greater in mass than what is seen on the top of the water. In lean, we say only 20% of the waste is readily identified, whereas the other 80% is hidden in what is called the hidden factory. Therefore, assigning the waste into categories becomes very difficult. Performing a loss analysis uncovers the other 80% that is hidden from view. In a loss analysis, the financial department captures all of the losses on the site. These losses are then broken down and segregated. Once the losses are segregated, the categories are plotted on a Pareto chart to help identify the greatest losses. Based on the iceberg, what do you think the greatest losses are for this hidden factory? Step 5. Create Business Master Plan After the loss analysis is performed, the top losses are compared to the critical business needs and the organizational master plan, as well as the corporate or organizational KPIs. The top losses are then assigned to projects such as continuous improvement projects, Kaizans, OPEX, CAPEX projects, etc., aimed at successfully meeting the organizational master plan and critical business needs. The master plan will consist of each project, the project's goals, the team leader, and be placed under the appropriate time frame. Step 6. Create business unit KPIs based on business master plan. After the business master plan is created, each department, business unit, and or area, will measure their contribution to the main site KPIs. For example, if the critical business need is to, is to increase productivity by 25%, then the site's business goal is the same, which is to increase productivity by 25%. The site KPI for this business goal is percent productivity. The site KPI is then adopted as the main KPI for each department, business, business unit and or area. Once established this main, but lagging indicator, KPI gets broken down into its contributing drivers, such as, percent uptime, percent breakdowns, percent minor stops, percent speed loss, and percent idle time. Step 6. The drivers to the main KPIs at the department, business unit, and or area are then measured, tracked, and responded to at the line level. At the line level, the main contributors are further broken down into key drivers by line. For example, a main driver for percent productivity at the line level is percent minus stops minus stops may be further broken down into its main drivers. For this line, those main drivers are, 1. Number of cup jams 2. Number of lid jams. By setting targets and warning limits to the frequency of these events and applying root cause analysis to eliminate their presence we are successfully driving the main KPI, percent productivity to the target goal of 25% increase.
loss analysis helps us to identify the main drivers by segregating, or separating, larger losses into their component losses. At which point, these main component losses become key metrics for the KPI on the line. This breakdown from the corporate KPI to the individual line KPIs is known as cascading KPIs or goal alignment. Let's look at another example, the key issue for our company is, high maintenance cost of old equipment. Translating this key issue into the critical business need, to remain competitive and profitable we must, reduce maintenance cost. The CBN is then translated into the corporate GAPE KPI on the organizational master plan, implement TPM phase 2 at both powder plants by Q3 2017. The corporate KPI is then sent down to the individual sites to create site KPIs, this being, implement TPM phase 2 on pilot 2 on pilot line by Q3 2017. The department that is responsible for the pilot line will then develop main KPIs for the pilot line in support of the site KPI. In this example, the line KPI is, implement TPM phase 2 on line 1 by Q3 to by Q3 2017. In order to ensure they successfully accomplish the corporate KPI they may expedite the timeline from Q3 2017 to Q2 2017. The line 1 KPI will then be further broken down into its key drivers, drivers, percent uptime percent completion of PMs percent progress towards phase completion percent of defect tags eliminated percent of source of contamination, socks, and hard to reach places, HTR. Let's look at another example, the key is, as you drill down, from top, corporate KPI, to bottom. Line KPIs, you can see the cascading effect, like a ball rolling downhill. With each turn, the KPI becomes more and more defined until we reach a leading indicator that is proactive in nature. If we do A, B, C then we will satisfy this KPI for this shift, this day, this week etc. until we successfully obtain our main objective. For example, our main corporate objective is to reduce maintenance costs. Our site objective in response to the corporate objective is to implement TPM Phase 2 by Q3 2017. A KPI that measures how well we are doing on this line is percent uptime. Why? Why? Because if the machine is running then it isn't down, and if it isn't down, it isn't requiring costs to fix. A driver to percent uptime is mean time to respond. This is a leading indicator for this KPI as we have direct control or influence over how fast or how slow we are to getting to the line and fixing the issue. The longer we take to respond and fix the issue the lower the percent uptime. For example, step 6b, establish the KPI criteria, how will this be calculated, what is the equation. All charts should display the equation used to calculate the KPI metric. How often will this KPI be tracked, shiftily, daily, weekly, quarterly, monthly, when will the KPI be reviewed? Set up a routine review meeting. What are the goals and targets for the KPI? One goal or a staggered goal? What actions will be taken when the KPI fails? Who is responsible for tracking and reporting out on the KPI? Be sure to include the owner and the backup on the chart. What type of chart will be used to track the KPI? Step 7 Review historical performance. Obtain 6 to 12 months of historical data on the KPI of interest. Review the historical performance for trends. Ascending trends, descending trends, common cause, special cause, descriptive statistics, mean, median, mode, standard deviation, mode, standard deviation. Fine tune desired goals and target zones. It is very important to analyze the historical data for trends, observing where the variation of the data is concentrated. Are there any outliers? If so, track down and assign the causes to these outliers. 
When there is large variation in the process, special cause may be driven to correction but not prevention. In this case, RCA will be fundamental in successfully eliminating these repeaters due to process and quality failures. Whereas, if these are due to failed components BDA is the practice of choice. If the variation is rather tight, Lean Six Sigma is a suitable practice to apply in successfully obtaining the KPI goal. Which project type to apply in successfully obtaining the KPI goal is dependent on the type of issues observed from the historical trends. It is 8a. Create KPI Charts 1. Create the KPI chart, Excel or PowerPoint is a good program to use. 2. Ensure the X axis and Y axis are in the correct units and that they are set up in the correct intervals. 3. Based on the historical data, update and create the target and goal lines established in step 7 on the chart. 4. Determine if the traffic light visual cues will be used. If so, create a chart legend indicating use of color scheme. 5. Hang the chart in a place that will be easily seen by the team and, re and reviewed, preferably on the KPI communication board. When establishing KPIs, it is also imperative to understand if the goal is easily achievable or will require several projects to complete. If the latter is the case, it is best to stagger the goals in relation to the completion of these projects. In this example, the only solution to obtaining such a significant step change is to stagger these goals over time. In this case, we used an approach applying sigma bands. This is a new technique, but a very useful and practical application. Lecture 8 of this series covers this topic in greater detail. Please refer to this lecture. In the stagger goal and target line approach, the final chart will appear something like the chart we display here. In this chart, we see how each new quarter contains its own target and goal lines. Step 9. Update the master plan After we have created the KPI chart, we update the master plan with the new projects and KPI goals and target lines. These projects will be staggered based on the timing of the different milestones and completion dates. 1. For each zone of the KPI chart, identify what actions will be taken, if any, when a data point falls within that zone. For example, if there are three zones, establish an action for each of the three zones. 2. Communicate the action plan to all plan to all members involved. 3. Create an action board to list the action items for the KPIs that fail. 3a. If the KPI fails, implement an RCA or BDA depending on the type of failure. 3b. Report out on the progress of the corrective and corrective and preventive actions, CARPA resulting from the RCA or BDA until all of individual CARPA items have been completed. 1. For e Ensure everyone responsible for the KPI know and understand the action of each zone. Update these zones as necessary. Step 11. Measure KPIs Measure the KPIs depicted by the established frequency in Step 6b. Ensure that everyone is using the same equation to calculate the KPI. Ensure that everyone understands how to record the data on the KPI chart. Routinely visit the Gambia to ensure that KPI is being filled out according to the established frequency. If the chart is not being updated, communicate with the responsible individual the importance of the KPI and their responsibility in ensuring this is done. Report out on the KPI during the review meetings. Step 12. Establish routine reviews of the KPI chart. Although, leading indicators should be reviewed at the GEMBA by operations. There are times when these KPIs will be reviewed in a meeting environment, regardless of the format, the following should be established. 1. Routine meetings should be established to review the KPI performance, PI performance based on a repeating frequency. 
This may be daily for operations during the daily operations review, or weekly for business unit personnel during the weekly operations reviews, and monthly for senior management during the monthly operations review meetings, more, two, more, two. During these meetings, the KPI chart should be reviewed for trends, outliers, special cause, etc. 3. Action items should be implemented based on what zones the data point falls in according to the action plan. 4. Be sure to, to perform RCA and BDA, depending on the KPI failure. And, complete the CARPA in a timely manner. 5. During these meetings, identify the life cycle of the KPI discussed in Lecture 9. Follow the life cycle for the KPI. Once I. Once the KPI has exited the repeat loop as detailed by the KPI, although, leading indicators should be reviewed at the GEMBARBI operation. Every three to six weeks, or when the KPI has reached the end of its life cycle, perform a periodic review of the data reviewing historical data to current data. This review should cover the following. 1. Review the data for trends. Is the KPI trending in a positive direction in relation to the goal and target lines? If not, take action. Perform an RCA of the KPI. What factors changed? Did the process change? Etc. Report out the findings to the review committee. 2. Update charts with new goals, target. If we have successfully reached the current goal and targets, or will reach these goals and targets well before our date, revise these goals to be more aggressive. 3. Review the current action plans. Are these action plans driving success? If not, update the action plan. Communicate any changes in the action plan to the team. 4. Once a KPI has reached the end of its life cycle, Place the KPI on a relaxed frequency to ensure the progress does not backslide. Identify a new KPI to be placed in its stead. Step 12b, repeat the cycle every 6 to 12 months, or when a KPI has reached the end of its life cycle. This concludes today's lecture. If you like this video, Please like us on YouTube, or visit us at l6sigmasupportal.com for more information on this topic.